Okay class, we're here in the greenhouse again to get you some more uh, soils experiments. Uh, now we've moved on to a different experiment. We've been talking about nutrition, we're going to talk about organic material, we're going to talk about mycorrhizae. So I thought why not um, take some soils, uh, analyze them, get a professional analysis as far as nutrient goes and what the recommendations are, and then uh, set up an experiment and plant some seeds and then evaluate what happens in those uh, soils in another controlled environment. So here's what I got going for you guys. This is the starting, um, this is starting step one here. And so what I have here for you is um, six different types of soil. And so here is soil one, soil two, soil three, soil four, five, and six. These correlate to the people who sent me the soil. So this is Sanborn. This is groves, and so all of soils in this line are all from groves from the same soil. And what I did was, um, the people sent me these soils from all around the state. These are grape growing regions, these are gardens, these are orchard growing regions, and I'll have that information to you. But what I did was I took each of their soils and I sent them into Kinsey Agriculture and got them analyzed. And I got them analyzed for how much nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfates, calcium, magnesium, etc. I'll provide this information for you when we start to analyze. But I have one of these sheets for every one of these soils that corresponds here. And so for the experiment, for the first one, this is from the Chino Garden in Chino Valley. This is an organic garden. So across this line, these are all Chino Garden. And what we did was, the first one is a control. Nothing was done to this. The second one, we added a mycorrhizae material. This one is called Rooter's Mycorrhizae. It's a commercial product. Um, it tells us what type of mycorrhizae is in there. Um, each variety of mycorrhizae and so it's a mix of a lot of different mycorrhizae to use in an agricultural setting. I used one teaspoon in this material. Next I did peat moss. I have uh, just your good old-fashioned sunshine peat moss. Uh, nice um, gardeners are very aware of this peat moss material. It makes up a large component of potted plants but um, peat moss used as an amendment. What I did was I put it one inch deep and then I incorporated it into the top inch, inch and a half of soil. I did the same thing with the Rooters mycorrhizae. Once I put it on, I stirred it down in with my finger. And then in this last one, this is one teaspoon of organic um, fertilizer. The organic fertilizer is here. This is starter and transplant fertilizer. 3% uh, nitrogen, 2% phosphorus, 3% potassium. This fertilizer actually comes with, in its analysis, it has some mycorrhizae um, with it. And so they call this one starter and transplant and this is an organic product. It has, actually I'll tell you what it has in there. It has uh, feather meal, bone meal, and sulfate of potash and then some uh, mycorrhizae. So one teaspoon was added here, stirred up, and then again this corresponds to every one in this line got the same treatment. So every pot in this line here got peat moss one inch deep, deep added to it. Every one in this line got the Rooters mycorrhizae and the first one is always a control. So we have six different soils, each one getting a different treatment and so we have a pretty good setup. The um, other thing to note is I utilized uh, green Swiss chard seeds. It took two packets. I put three seeds in each one and Swiss chard will be a good growing crop here in the fall. It's active and quick growing and it also um, will show deficiency symptoms easy. It'll show height, um, growth, etc. It'll be easy to uh, analyze from afar and so the, this is our setup for our experiment and I thank you and uh, good luck taking a look at this.